Hello, and welcome to the next installment of Diversified's Quarterly Investment Review and Economic Update. My name is Mike Horwath. I am the Chief Investment Officer here at Diversified. As we do every quarter, we want to get together and really discuss what happened in the second quarter, what's happened year to date from a market and economic perspective. So when we get together and we, we look at really what's happened in markets through 630, we've seen continuation of a broad-based equity rally. So in stock markets, you know, if we use the global uh, market index, which we use the MSCI All Country World Index, the ACWI, it's up over 12%. U.S. large cap has outperformed uh, the international space. U.S. small cap within U.S. equities has actually outperformed U.S. large cap. So U.S. has outperformed the international space. Within international, the developed markets have outperformed emerging. But by and large, if we just take a step back and look at everything holistically, it's been a continuation of this broad-based rally within equity markets. The equity is up over 12%. U.S. small cap, as I mentioned, really performing well, uh, as it does during economic re economic recovery times, uh, up over 17%. U.S. bonds have had quite a year. It's been a turbulent year from a bond yield perspective. The reason is the long end of bond yields, right? So longer term bonds are really driven by the expectation for economic growth and the expectation for inflation. Given the fact that there has been so much chatter about inflation, it's not a surprise and it, that, and I, I really shouldn't leave out economic growth and GDP growth, but inflation has driven the conversation. There's not much of a surprise that uh, bond yields have moved so much. But because bond yields have pushed up, uh, meaning expectations for inflation have risen, expectations for GDP growth have risen. Uh, those expectations have driven bond yields up, which means bond prices are pulling back. People are willing to pay less and less for the bonds that are, are out there today. So we've seen uh, U.S. bonds pull back slightly. It's not a very volatile asset class, but still we've seen uh, U.S. aggregate bonds pull back about 1, 1.6% 1 uh, so far year to date. And much of that is driven by uh, longer term government and corporate bonds. On the municipal bond side, we still see returns have actually been positive. Uh, municipal bonds did pull back pretty strongly uh, during the pullback, recovered pretty quickly, have continued their recovery, and are positive on the year. So really, in summary, from a, perspective, uh, from a market and uh, uh, index perspective, we can see that uh, really U.S. equities have continued to perform well. Even the international markets have performed well, given quite a turbulent time from a COVID perspective, uh, from the U.S. dollar being very strong. Uh, with, with what's giving, going on within, uh, from an economic standpoint. So broad-based rally in equities, U.S. bonds have, have pulled back slightly because of especially longer-term bond yields uh, being driven uh, up given the inflation talk and economic growth uh, discussion at this point. So really, what are the economic hi highlights? We're still expecting and we've still seen some really strong economic recovery in, in many industries. Everybody knows what happened during uh, February and March of 2020. There was a massive pullback, and especially in, in certain areas of the market and certain industries. And we're continuing to recover uh, because of that. I'm going to show you some, some charts here in a second with the difference of market returns for different indexes and asset classes uh, from the time of the pandemic through the November, really. And what happened in November was an election and really a vaccine uh, announcement. So we're going to discuss and, and show the market rotation since that point. But from an economic uh, highlight perspective, it's, it's been economic recovery and inflation. Inflation has driven the conversation, concerns over inflation. And, and why is that? Uh, you saw in my last video, the Fed has a mandate to keep inflation low. But if inflation gets out of control, their job is really to pull several uh, mechanisms to pull that down. They can do that through asset purchases. They can do that through uh, interest rates, short-term interest rates. So the concern for markets and the reason markets continue to reprice things and, and adjust how they're pricing things is the expectation for whether the Fed is going to have to move quicker than what they expect. From a market standpoint, early in the year, these deep cyclical economic recovery 
uh, and economically sensitive areas like financials and, and energy have really driven returns from a sector standpoint. There's been a rotation a little bit since then. Growth uh, stocks have performed well. Everybody knows that you know big tech has, has kind of driven markets. It's become the, the, the really the dominant force at the top end of, of the U.S. stock market. So we've seen this rotation away from uh, those deep cyclical names that have performed well after November into back to some of the, the more growthy technology, uh, consumer uh, discretionary type of names. From an economic growth standpoint, we do expect that economic growth can be very strong this year. We're probably looking at GDP growth from a calendar year standpoint around 6%. In 2022, we expect it to take a little bit of a step back, probably closer to that 4 to 5% range. And in 2023, similar, uh, continue to pull back until we get to some sort of long-term uh, lower growth rate, probably somewhere around 2%. We just spoke about bond yields. So bond yields have gone from really around 0.9% on the 10-year. So the 10-year bond yield gave investors 0.9% at the end of 2020. By the end of the first quarter, we saw that number jump to 1.7%. Now, 1.7% doesn't feel like an extremely high number, but the perspective is from 0.9% to 1.7% is a big jump. That's almost a double in the bond yield over that time period. That's why you saw bond uh, prices pull back. These bond indexes show returns for bonds uh, in the negative. Now, since then, uh, we've seen those bond yields drop down to about 1.3% on the 10-year. Why is that happening? That is really being driven by expectations for GDP growth and expectations for inflation. As an expectations for inflation rise, you'll start to see those bond yields push up. That really means investors are, are selling their bonds uh, allowing their yields to, to increase uh, because the expectation is in inflation is going to rise and inflation is an enemy for fixed income. Inflation uh, being high means if you own a bond that yields 1.5%, it eats away the real return of that, right? Your inflation adjusted return uh, pulls back. So inflation is something that's going to be in the headlines. It has been in the headlines. We're going to keep an eye on it. Uh, we'll discuss it in a second here for what our expectations are. When you flip the page and look at what's performing well, I, I had mentioned about this rotation. And there's been several rotations from a, from a market standpoint and sector return standpoint uh, so far in the last really in the last year, I think is a, a good way to look at it. Since March 2020, really from March 2020 to November, it was these growth oriented stocks. It was technology. It was some of these growthy healthcare names, consumer discretionary. What got beat up were some of these deep cyclical, economically sensitive areas, energy, financials, especially the travel industry. And since that point, since early November, there was an election uh, that, that took place, obviously, and then there was also the announcement of vaccines. There has been this rotation. From an industry standpoint, you look at what's performed well since then or performed best since then, it's been the energy names, the travel names, the, the real estate, the, the financials. We've seen value stocks. We've seen small cap. We've seen Europe. Some of these areas that underperform for a little while as U.S. large cap growth has really dominated uh, the, the return landscape. They all have these, this economically sensitive or economic recovery uh, theme to them. You know, financials perform well when markets are recovering. Same thing with energy. Small cap uh, stocks tend to be more concentrated in, in financials and energy, real estate, industrials, some of these more economically sensitive areas. So as the expectation for economic growth and an economic recovery occurs, it's not a surprise that we've seen some of these areas perform well. What are our expectations then going into the second half of 2021? We do think this economic recovery is going to continue. We think uh, the Federal Reserve and we do think the, the fiscal uh, stimulus. So, so the federal government are going to continue to be accommodative. From a fiscal standpoint, we know that there's an infrastructure bill sitting uh, kind of in the, this limbo of, of Congress and, and what's going to happen there. We know what the Fed's been doing because they're just dominating headlines. The Fed has had to be very active in response to COVID-19. The Fed has had to begin its asset purchase program or really ramp up its asset purchase program to, to 
increased liquidity in markets. They've kept interest rates extremely low. We still think that they're going to continue to keep uh, interest rates extremely low. The key is inflation. If the Fed feels that they have to raise rates because inflation has picked up and it's not transitory, and by transitory, and when you hear that word, what it means is really short term, that from really the past couple of months through maybe the end of the year, there are economists who believe that inflation is just going to be high because there's pent up demand, there's supply chain issues, uh, there's base effect issues that last year uh, inflation or, or asset prices or, or costs had pulled back because of COVID, that now because things are year over year, that there's just uh, a natural base effect because of uh, uh, inflation there. They think that it's transitory, that it's going to fade away. We tend to see that that's probably going to become the case. We just need to keep an eye on it because if it proves to not be transitory, the Fed may need to raise rates or they may feel like they have no other choice but to raise short-term interest rates. And ultimately what ends up happening is markets are going to continue to reprice and it could come as a shock to markets. So the Fed's going to be very careful in how they, they put out the rhetoric and how they uh, express their views so they're very transparent and that investors can continue to price in what those expectations look like. We do think inflation, at least most of what we're seeing is going to be transitory. We think that corporate earnings are going to be very strong here in the second or well, for the second quarter here in, in July. We do think the rest of the year is going to prove that uh, earnings for really U.S. companies is going to be, are going to be uh, very strong uh, throughout the rest of the year. So we do think that that's going to be important, though, because asset prices are so high, because stock prices are so high, that they're going to need to warrant. We're going to need to see some of this this uh, growth happening from an earnings standpoint to, to warrant the stock prices that we're seeing. And really, the last thing would be we do expect choppier markets. So from a choppier market standpoint, look, markets have been very good and we've seen pullbacks in 2020, we saw it in Q4 2018, but by and large, when you take a step back, markets have been very strong. Don't be worried if you start to see markets start to get choppy. When markets see valuations at the levels we are, which means stocks are expensive, they're pricing a lot of good news, any little news change can drive market volatility. Don't be surprised if we see that. But that's okay, right? That's just the market repricing itself. It's natural. Always take a step back. Always think about why things are happening, what we expect to happen, and don't be reactionary. Try to be proactive. How are we positioning portfolios uh, in response to kind of our expectations? Really, we're looking at still overweighting U.S. large cap. We still like equities over fixed income. While the stock markets are expensive, the bond uh, market is <laughs> even more expensive at this point. It's, it's kind of hard to believe, but, but it is. It's more expensive. Uh, than the stock market. So if we're going to take the, the standpoint of looking at U.S. Uh, stocks over international, we, we do like uh, U.S. over international. We do like small cap at this point because of economic recovery and the, the sensitivity that U.S. small cap has uh, to the cyclicality of, of economic growth. So we do have this, this theme of being a little bit more uh, leaning towards these second uh, economically cyclical areas like financials, like industrials, like small cap. We do think that uh, emerging markets will continue to recover. We do see that as an area of potential growth here in the future. So those are really the areas that we're focusing in the equity side. On the fixed income side, we are leaning away from uh, U.S. government bonds. They're expensive. They were really uh, bought up during the market pullback. And now with bond yields where they're at, we just think that there's better opportunities elsewhere in some of the plus sectors like high yield, emerging market debt, bank loans. We just have to be very careful with how much risk we put in our fixed income portfolio and always understand what the purpose of the fixed income portfolio is for our, uh, our, for our overall portfolios. So while we are leaning away from some of the longer term government bonds, some of the, maybe the longer term corporate bonds, we still have plenty there to act as a cushion for market volatility. We're just looking at other areas that we see opportunities within fixed income that can perform well during some of these economic recovery times. So in really in summary, 
what we've seen so far this year has been uh, continued economic recovery, a broad-based rally in equity markets. We've seen continued uh, rotations within equity markets from some of these growth stocks performing really, really well to some of the deep cyclical, the energies, the financials, to now, you know, recently we saw uh, growth stocks uh, pick back up. When you look on a year-to-date basis, you do still see the energy and financials and materials and industrials have, have performed well, and real estate's another area that has performed well so far year-to-date. Those are areas that perform well in the early stages of economic recovery. From a a governmental standpoint, we do think that uh, the federal government will, will continue to work to pass uh, fiscal stimulus, whether it's in the form of an uh, infrastructure bill or something along those lines. There's something there. We're going to see what ends up happening from a negotiation standpoint and, uh, and see what kind of gets driven from the central uh, federal government. From the, the Fed side, we do think that they'll, that they'll continue to keep interest rates very low. We do think that they'll continue to do their asset purchase program. What I urge investors to keep an eye on is the rhetoric. When are they going to taper those asset purchases? Because they will have to. When are they expecting to raise rates? Because there isn't always complete agreement in the Fed as to when the expectations are for them to uh, raise interest rates. And a lot of that's going to be driven by the data, right? What's coming in from an inflation uh uh, perspective, what's coming in from an economic growth standpoint, all those little things, we have to keep an eye on them. And from our portfolio uh, side, we're overweighting U.S. over international. We do still like emerging markets long term. Within U.S., we, we've added to some of these areas like financials to industrials. We, we like these areas as uh, the economic recovery continues. We still have allocations to U.S. small cap because for the same reason, they perform well during early economic recovery and, and kind of the, the middle economic recovery. We still think that there's there's opportunity there. We certainly haven't given up on U.S. technology. We're just taking some of our gains or leaning into some of these other areas to try to capture some of the, the upside there. And within bonds, we're, we're leaning a little bit away from government bonds. We're leaning more into some of the plus sectors of, of high yield, EM debt, so emerging market debt and bank loans, keeping an eye on TIPS which are treasury inflation protected securities. We've dialed back on those because of how much they rallied early this year. But it is an area we, we had allocations to. We still have some allocation to, just to a, to a smaller extent. So I hope this was a, was a helpful recap of what we've seen in the first half, really, of 2021 uh, from both the economic side and the market side. As always, we appreciate you taking the time and listening in. I, I hope you find value in this. But as always, thank you for the, the trust you put in Diversify. We, we don't take it lightly. We take it very, very seriously. And it's something we take a ton of pride in. Uh, in, in uh, man, from my perspective, managing your assets, but you know, being you know, your, your planners. Uh, so at this point, we're, we're going to uh, look forward to the second half of 2021. We'll see what it has in store. But as always, reach out to us if you have any questions. So from all of us here at Diversified, thank you for the trust. Uh, Stay wealthy, stay healthy, stay happy. Take care.